So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and I wanted to cover a topic about iPadOS 15 and iOS 15 for that matter that not a lot of people have been talking about and that has to do with Safari extensions. So when iPadOS 15 released about, I want to say almost a month ago now, actually no, it's been about two, two and a half weeks since iPadOS 15 has been released and part of Apple's keynote was them talking about how Safari was now going to have the ability to use extensions, ideally just how Chrome uses extensions and how Safari on Mac OS uses extensions, right? And now before we get started, Safari extensions, especially on Mac OS, are nowhere near where the extension capability is on Chrome, right? So Google Chrome, if you use plugins, if you use extensions, you're gonna go to Google Chrome because the ecosystem is just way larger. Safari has taken steps to actually make their extension ecosystem a little bit better. You know, for on the Mac OS side, they added like Honey, Grammarly, like the big dogs for extensions and they work as advertised, but Google Chrome's always had a step up when it comes to extensions. But now Apple brought that over to Safari, and today I'm gonna to show you guys A, how to actually find them, B, how to install them, and also how to use them, and kind of see exactly what's next for extensions on iPadOS, and basically if it's a viable option and if it makes a big difference on your day-to-day -day life. But without further ado, after that long introduction, hopefully there's no more reflective light from my circle light ring or whatever it's called on the glasses, but let's get into the video. So let's get right into this video everybody. So to begin with, let's go and show you that we're on iPadOS 15. So we go into the about software version 15.0 and we're on 19A5261W. And the main reason I'm showing you that is because you need to be on iPadOS or iOS 15 beta one in order for these extensions to work. And keep in mind that we are on beta one. So you might need to give these extensions in this ecosystem a little bit of time to you know mature and evolve over time. But I'm gonna show you pretty much the state of extensions and where they're at right now with Safari on iPadOS 15. So let's actually figure out how to get extensions. So you're gonna to wanna to go into settings, you're gonna to want to scroll all the way down to Safari, and then within the Safari settings, you're gonna go into extensions. Now you can see that I already have two extensions on here because I was testing them out before the video, but for you, if you don't have extensions already installed, this is gonna be blank and it's just gonna have the more extension section available. So you're gonna click on that, and then it's gonna take you to the App Store version or the extension, Safari extension portion of the App Store. And as of right now, the only way to access this App Store is through, this, through the settings. Like you cannot go into the regular App Store and search for Safari extensions because there's no category for extensions. So this is pretty much what you're dealing with when in terms of the library of certain extensions for Safari on iPadOS. And as you can see, there's a pretty big common theme as to what extensions are available currently. You can see we have Wiper, Kablock, Norton ad blocker, another ad blocker. So basically you're dealing with nothing but ad blockers. There's no honey.com, there's no Grammarly, there's no, you know, big, there's no hunter.io, there's no Snowvio, there's no vidIQ extension. So these are all, you know, the big players, the extensions that usually work on Chrome, those are not available on the Safari, at least not yet. And if you guys have used extensions on Mac OS Safari, then you know that even that ecosystem of extensions isn't nearly as robust as the Chrome extension ecosystem. So again, right now, the only thing that you're getting is website ad blockers, right? So for instance, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to download one. It works just as pretty much any application. We'll download it together, face ID, all checked in. So we get out of here and then you can see that an application actually does download. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna just download in the back end or anything like that, but there is an application clearly that has been downloaded called Bolt. So now that we have all these extensions installed, and now you can see that once we've installed Bolt, you can see that there's now a bunch of different toggles in the Safari extension section of the settings to turn off and on. So I'm not gonna mess with the Bolt ones because that's a brand new one. I've been playing with Block Bear and Kablock. So before I actually show you how to run the extensions and anything like that, let's go and open a Safari website. You can see that I have ESPN open right here and you can see that we actually have a lot of ads, right? So you have the Euro 2020 ad up here. You have one on the right hand side down here. So now you have two ways to actually activate it, right? I'm gonna show you first off this way. So let's turn on Block Bear and let's turn on Kablock. Let's go out of here. Let's pull down to refresh the page and ideally the ads will be gone. So you can see that there's no banner ad at the top anymore. The, the ad that was down here is also gone. So that's one way to activate those extensions. Another way is in this new Safari menu. So if you click on these three dots right here and you scroll down, you actually have the ability to turn off content blockers 
and then also check out website settings. And then also, depending on what application and the functionality of that blocker application or that extension, you might even get some more features like BlockBear's bug report and then whitelisting websites through BlockBear. So if I wanna turn off the content blockers, I can do that. It'll refresh the page. And then ideally, these will eventually show back up. As you can see, there are the ads because we turn off the ad blocker. And then let's turn it back on. So we can go down here and you can see that it's still there. So we can turn on the content blockers. It'll refresh everything and we're good to go. The next thing that I did want to test out was if these ad blockers actually worked on a YouTube video. So if we go to youtube.com, let's click on any random one. A little Greg's gadget in here. Hopefully we don't get copyrighted, but you can see that we're still getting ads on YouTube. So these aren't video ad blockers. These are purely website ad blockers. So shout out to Greg's gadget. If you guys don't know who he is, you guys probably should know who he is. And then another thing that I want to reiterate is that I didn't actually open up these applications or create accounts. All I did was install the extension and then these apps obviously populated on here. I didn't have to open up the app. I didn't have to create an account. I didn't have to do anything. These apps are just there. I haven't even opened them a single time and the extensions still work. And then lastly, to actually manage the extensions, it's exactly where you think it is. It's inside of the extensions section of Safari. And like I said, you can just toggle them off and on. And again, I'm hoping that they bring a little bit more in terms of different types of extensions. And I hope they evolve to include, you know, some of the bigger players and extensions and something that's a little bit more viable because right now the ad blocking is definitely nice. It's definitely working as advertised, not buggy at all, even though we're on beta one. But like I said, I want a little bit more out of my extensions, like being able to use a vidIQ extension, or like I said, maybe a Snowvio to get some contacts out of websites and things like that. So there's still a long way to go with the extension ecosystem in Safari. But for now, we'll take what we can get and that's what we have with the extensions. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So as you guys saw, clearly the extensions ecosystem needs a little bit of time to evolve, a little bit more time to mature. Because right now, the only types of extensions that we're getting are all ad blockers, right? And you can't even block ads inside of YouTube videos. It's all just website ad blockers, which I guess, you know, is totally fine. A lot of people like to have their ad blockers. That's why they get extensions on Google Chrome and Mac OS Safari. So that's an awesome, you know, that's an awesome additive that Apple didn't have to do, right? So I think over time it's gonna mature. We're, start to, we're gonna start to get a little bit more of the bigger players, like somehow we're gonna integrate Honey and Grammarly and maybe some like Snowvio or Hunter.io, things to generate emails and things like that. So for right now, it's obviously in its infancy and needs a lot more time to mature and get better. But if you are into ad blockers and you wanna use those for Safari extensions, then they work as advertised, right? They work exactly how they're supposed to. They're very easy to find, very easy to manage. And if you do want your ad blockers, by all means, it's working perfectly fine on iPad OS 15 beta one. So I'm hoping maybe with the new betas, we're gonna get some more extensions because you can't really even access the extension library on the app store without going through the settings. But let's see what Apple does, if it's gonna be a quick iteration or a quick maturity or evolution of these extensions, or if it's gonna be something that's gonna take forever and over time, companies are gonna to have to actually code for these extensions on Safari. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something new today. If you guys did, drop a comment down below. It really helps the YouTube algorithm and get this video in front of more eyes, essentially help the channel grow. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Comment one thing that you guys would wanna see from an extension standpoint come to iPadOS or even iOS 15 on Safari. For me, it would have to be like a vidIQ extension to help me kind of get some real data analytics more than even YouTube Studio gives me. Or maybe something like Honey would be nice to have just to make sure that I'm getting the right discounts. But comment below what you guys would want from an extension in Safari on iPadOS. And like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, 